for one of the key concepts to grasp when you're using computer software, CAD software, to work as a landscape designer is that you are creating a model of the site in the computer. It's as though you are above the site, looking down on the site, and any inquiry you make of the site layout will give you information that means something to you in the real world. For example, if I use my mouse and zoom in here, and at a dimensions being added here, 2400 for the window, and we can use a, an inquiry of the model and say, what's the distance from one side of the window to another? And you can see 2372, and it's marked to 2400. And the reason this is not more accurate is I haven't jumped precisely to the beginning of the window opening and the end, but that's been done with the application of a dimension. And you see there's the two anchor points. So we are in what's referred to as model space now in most software like AutoCAD and GCAD Plus, but there is another space that you can move to where you can lay the design out. So if we go to a landscape plan, it's called a layout tab, and we'll go to a landscape plan now, you can see that the background represents a sheet of paper. At this point, I might want to turn off and not show the dimensions that are here and they are on their own layer so I'll go to the layer stack and just click on this little light bulb and turn those off then I'll right click and zoom extents so that I can see the page I can go in here into the tab for the layout sheet and go to the layouts manager you can see these sheets or layout sheets are in fact set for A2 size so the key issue is, here's the model, some people call it model space, and everything in here is full size. The pool, the decking, the house, the entrance, and so on. Some people prefer to make the background here white, and to do that, you go and click white. So we're now looking at what we saw in the layout space some people refer to it as a paper space but it gets a little confusing or it can get confusing if both have a white background and most CAD software will give you will start off with a dark background um, initially some people believe that's a little softer and kinder on the eyes but you certainly don't get muddled up you know if you see a white background that you are in a layout space and it's simulating looking at a page. Well I'd like now to create a new layout or paper space view and to do that go format and layouts and click the new tab and it's defaulting to an A4 page but I wanted to illustrate that you have a wide variety of paper sizes here, all of the ISO series. So let's pick an ISO A3 and let's pick it in landscape view. And it's going to be called simply layout one. So we'll OK that and OK. And now can you see in the bottom of the page here is layout one. So we click on it and there's a grid on at the moment. I'll take that off. It, that's useful for lining up images when you want to add illustrative images to the file. So when you create a new layout like that, it sets up a new page and a new what's called a floating viewport or viewport. And uh, here it is. So it, it attempts to maximize your view. You can get a bit bigger view by moving the corners or handles of the viewport like so and to um, position your eye into the model just double click while that floating viewport is highlighted and there we are we can now change our view bring it in a little closer and even more 
and we now see the whole of the site when we say display it on the layout there's the whole site displayed at this point there is no fixed scale let me zoom extents if I pick the floating viewport over here in the properties box the view scale here says 153 well we could say let's set a fixed scale of 200 there and you can see we we zoom out now in the Imperial most countries using the metric system um, you're allowed a fixed scale of 200 or a fixed scale of 100 or 50 there are known fixed steps now when we set a scale of 100 and click in here and make it fixed um, when we double click here we've got a fixed magenta box now and we could use that to for the sake of argument just look at the front portion of this design we can display that on the layout like so so we now have a layout sheet that is A3 that in the in zoom extents and A3 we've got all the information we want but of course we're missing the rear garden so it's that is a way to set a fixed scale you can of course have a a layout that's of no fixed scale so I have one here called landscape plan rear NTS no fixed scale not to scale and there we are and there I'm able to put the um, the logo of the designer as I've done here I've put that in a different place for the uh, no not to scale landscape plan for the front and here's the one we just created so it's quite easy to have different sheets of paper set each up without setting a scale or setting a fixed scale for each but where you want to make inquiries of your design that's the point where you return to the model and everything in that model has to be full size so in layout space there's relatively little you add to the layout space the scale is important the inclusion of a scale is very important it's included in the model and if we zoom in here and say pick our distance tool this time we'll snap to the end point there and the end point here we should get 5000 exactly and there's the 5000 down there in the command line area so to sum up you create your design in model space everything is full size it's a great idea to incorporate a scale a fixed scale bar into that model space and then create various layout spaces and always have that scale so no matter what size sheet of paper you tell the print shop to print it to there will always be an internal scale in there and they're not likely to pick up the wrong scale ruler and the construction team make errors of course if you are a really good designer you'll incorporate a lot of uh, dimensions enough dimensions for the construction team to build this design without any difficulty